Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people like treatable people, not necessarily a diagnosis. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my right would be... Amanda, I'm a PA student from Mount Union. And on my left... Hannah, PA student from St. Francis. Can I believe anything you say? I think so. Okay, thank you. So I just, want, I just wanted to make sure. So what we do every week is we, we're generally into a little bit of a quirkiness here, and sometimes we like to laugh on this show too, as laughter is the language of all recovery. It's a commonality among recovery, and remember, everyone out there is in recovery from something. So when we think about recovery, what do people generally think about? But if you're in recovery, what do they think from? That it's usually drugs or alcohol. Yes, yes, yes. However, people can be in recovery from relationships. People in recovery from anxiety, from depression, from, uh, from overeating, from all different types of facets in life in recovery. So I hope everyone's out there in recovery. I hope, I hope never, no one out there is exactly happy and satisfied just the way you are because we're going we're gonna to push you on. So today what we, what we normally like to do is present some type of a fact, some useful thing in your life that you can use. So let me ask you this, uh, Amanda. Uh, how is it that uh, thinking has such an impact on our lives? It controls I don't know how we delegate things throughout the day. It controls how we delegate things throughout the day. Hannah, can you answer that question for me? How does thinking, it's kind of who we are to a degree, I would say. Who we are to a degree? Yeah. All right, do you remember that uh, famous uh, philosopher, Rene Descartes? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and what, the, what was his uh, line that he came up with that everybody's been repeating for the last three or four hundred years? Oh. Um, I would butcher it, so I'm not going to try. Okay. He's, he, he, he said, I think, therefore, I am, right? Right. They thought it was one of the great advances in Western philosophical thought. However, what it did, what, what, it, what it slowed down the, the, the mindfulness uh, brigade for the, for the last 300 years. Okay? That's really what it did. Because we are not what we think. If you think, are you what you think? No. No. Are you? No. No. So I think, therefore, I am. You think, therefore, you are what? So, so we can get into that. I could think I'm a flying pink chimpanzee. You could think that. <laughs> and actually here in uh, where we're at now, it's a beautiful day, and it might be nice to take a little ride out in the sky around the areas of flying pink chimpanzee. Right. That'd be correct? Yeah. However, I'm going to use a word, and I don't like it very much, but I'm going to use it. I know that that thought's crazy. Is that correct? That's true. So the deal is, is how can, why, why can't we recognize and identify just the rest of these thoughts we think as just as incorrect? Okay. And, and most of them are, and most of them are. So I'd like to talk a little bit about today about uh, about cognitive fusion. Okay. Do you ever do you uh, did you ever hear of that term, Amanda? Not until today. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, you could have made something up. I'm, te I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, te I'm teasing. So what what in, in your own words what would it be? So it's when our thoughts uh, control and take over our behaviors. Mm-hmm. When our when our thoughts. How about you? Uh, how about you, Hannah? Um, I like the example I learned that it'd be like someone that thinks they're in pain all the time. All they do is think pain, so they are pain, and they can't kind of separate the two. So when our <clears throat> thoughts are fused with our behaviors, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Our thoughts are fused with our feelings, beliefs, and behaviors, right? Okay, so let me ask you, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you think drinking saliva is disgusting? Yeah. Do you think drinking saliva is disgusting? Saliva. Yeah. It's, yeah. Do you think it's disgusting? I would never how do, do it. How do you feel when you think when you think about when you think about drinking saliva? How does that make you feel? Not very good. Mm, kind of queasy in the stomach, right? Especially, yeah. Does your do you make saliva in your mouth? Like if it's my saliva, that's fine. You make it? Do you do you, do you, do you think you drink it all day long? I do because okay. I swallow it. Okay. So that's the idea. So oh. we're, so we're fusing that thought with it with an outcome, right? Mm -hmm. And we're making that outcome because of the thought. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're, we're allow, we allow those thoughts to dominate us. We, so how, let me ask everyone out there. Are you allowing your thoughts to dominate your life? You think, therefore, you are? That's absolute and complete nonsense. And I expect to hear from all the great philosophers out there on this, too. However, I'll be glad to talk to you about that. So the idea is how can we, how can we separate our thoughts from our behaviors and actions? How can we do that? We first have to be aware of them. We have to be able to label and identify them, do we mm -hmm. not? Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Uh, let's say that, I, I would suspect that your parents probably have a good idea of what you look like. 
-hmm. And yours too, right? Yes. Okay. So if you two and your parents were in a huge department store in New York City, okay, mm -hmm. and you both got lost, mm -hmm. okay, so if your parents were able to accurately label and describe you, somebody could have, somebody could find you, couldn't they? Definitely. Right. So however, if you can't find somebody, if you get lost, that's pretty frightening. Do you imagine being a little one being lost in a department store like that? I was that? once. You scary. You were? Yeah. Tell us about that. It was scary. They're big and you don't know where you're at. Mm -hmm. I think I was seven. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure. So sometimes our thoughts are like that too. If we're not able to label and describe them, they get away from us and they get lost and we get, we get fearful. Okay. So the idea is, is to be able to label and describe them. So what I'm going to want to talk to everybody out there right now is a, is a uh, cognitive behavioral device called, it's a technique called thought diffusion. Diffusion. What does diffusion mean to you? Um, separating things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, we separate things, okay? So what we want to do is we do fact checks and we want to separate, we want to separate thoughts from, from behaviors, actions, and feelings, right? We want to separate. So one of, one of the things is we often do guided imagery, do we not? We, t we, take, we take that thought and maybe we put it on a cloud. Maybe we take that thought and we put it on a train and we watch it go into a tunnel. We put that thought and we put it on a leaf and watch it come down to the ground. We put it on, we put it on a leaf that's floating down a stream and we watch it go away. And of course, this requires some conscious thought, right? Has anyone here ever heard of a Buddha board? No. A Buddha board? Nope. No. No, not a Buddha board. Okay. So the idea is that, I hope uh, we can catch this out there. So when we're out there, so when we have a thought, it appears. Correct? Mm hmm Okay. So the more that we ruminate on that thought, the more that it goes over and over in your head, the more it becomes ingrained. The more, the, the, the more depth and weight that it has, the more, the more infused it is into our being. However, a thought is just a thought, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we just take that, if we just take that thought for what it is and leave it there, and as we talk, we'll soon see which one goes away. So the idea is that on a Buddha board, it's, it's, it's an object of thought diffusion. Okay. What's an illustration of is the more that we pay attention, the more that we give, uh, action and thought and substance to a thought, the longer it stays. However, if you can look down here, this bottom one's starting to fade because we just recognized it as a thought, did we not? That's all it was. We just recognized it as a thought. So this one's going to stay longer, this one's going to, this one's going to fade away. That's, that's the purpose of a Buddha board. So how can you incorporate that in your life, Hannah? Kind of along the same principle as not harping on it and being able to identify it and realize it's a th just a thought. So how, would one, how would one do that? Well, as you said, we have to be able to label and describe our thoughts, our emotions. Are you able to? Well, after four weeks here, I'm way better at it. Mm -hmm. So what, I, what I'd like you to do today, Amanda, is think about that, the saliva, is drinking saliva disgusting, okay? And it's, it, that, that, that gives an accurate description of that, okay? So you are not your thoughts. Can you change your, do you change your mind? Do I change my mind when I make decisions? Do you, you, ever, did you ever just change your mind? Mm -hmm. Did you ever say, oh, I've changed my mind? Mm -hmm. Do you ever do that? So help me understand how you can't use that same process in changing your thoughts. I think it's more difficult to label a thought if it's not in front of you and it's hard to identify them. Whereas like a decision, you can choose this way or this way. So it's easier to change your mind that way because you can see both things. So that's, that's your, then you're separating, right? Mm -hmm. You're diffusing yourself away, for, away from that thought, right? Mm -hmm. So for everyone out there, uh, let me ask you this. What's troubling you today? Is there, normally when people talk about racing thoughts, generally there's four or five or six ruminating thoughts that keep going round and round and round in a hamster cage. Okay, so the idea is, is for you to be able to label and identify them and separate those thoughts from reality. I'm going to ask everybody to do some fact checking today. Fact checking today. Ask yourself, is what I'm thinking true? Is what I'm thinking true? And if it is, then you have some control over it. If what you're thinking is not true, then I would suggest that you do the Buddha board and let that thought dissipate and fly away. Of course, these words are easy to say, are they not? Yes. It's easy to say. Mm -hmm. So how, do you, how, how does one incorporate that in their life? Be in the present moment. 
and identify your thoughts. Be in the present moment. Say more about that. Um, just accepting for the moment that it is and um, enjoy everything about it and notice that you're alive. So you're accepting a thought for exactly what it is. Exactly. Merely a thought. Mm -hmm. Does a thought have substance? No. Does a thought have weight? Uh, no. It can, but it shouldn't. Does a, does a thought have, does a, is a thought in three dimensions? No, mm -hmm. oh no. No, no. A thought is just that, isn't it? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's an ethereal thing that's, that's existing between, between synapses and the neurons firing. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my question out there is, everybody, help me everyone understand how you place so much credence on that. How you much place it. When we talk about mindfulness, sometimes the mindfulness is merely the space between the thoughts. All that chatter that's going on in your head. All that chatter that's going on in your head. And this is one of the purposes of mindfulness, is to slow that down. So if you're looking for complex answers to your, to your issues, you're not going to find them from me. Okay? What you're going to do is find here at Seclair, you're going to find some simple ways to unravel that ball of yarn. We're going to help you break things down and chunk things up into, into doable small achievable goals and do them in your life and my suggestion is if you are feeling well overwhelmed to step back for a moment and say how important am i and how important is this to me put these things on put these things on paper take these things out of your head and put them on paper take those thoughts out of your head and put them on paper and recognize them for exactly what they are that's a challenge that means that you actually have to do something you actually have to do something so let's uh, let's look down here amanda that's gone down here isn't it? Mm -hmm. but, but that thought's still up there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That thought's still there because we'd given it power and weight. We'd given it, we'd given it three dimensions. Okay? So, and it's your choice, right? <coughs> it's your choice. So, for those of you who are more interested in this per type, particular type of mindfulness-based cognitive behavioral therapy, we suggest that you visit uh, Seclair's website at www.seclair.com. Perhaps uh, make an appointment to come in to see one and share your thoughts and feelings. I believe that you may feel better for it. Yes. So until then, we always often give a uh, free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, yes. and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we fish without bait. We fish without bait. Until then, well, your assignment, as always, is to do a kindness for yourself and a kindness for another smell of flower today. Uh, tell a cashier that you appreciate their smile. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.